Gym owners, do you know why people are leaving your gym? Because it looks like shit. Okay, okay. Maybe it doesn't look exactly like shit. But in all seriousness, not having a clean gym really is a reason a lot of people don't stick around. In this video, we're covering an important and, and deeply unsexy topic, which are five ways to make your gym cleaner. My name is Mark Fisher from businessunicorns.com and I gotta tell you, this is certainly not a topic I think that is part of why many of us got into running a gym. But at the end of the day, when we run a small business and we're running a gym where people are sweaty and where there's equipment that can get dirty, and it is a rare type of small business where our clients and customers lie on the floor, all of which means we need to have very high standards for cleanliness in our gym. Because my pitch to you is this, it is not just the dust bunnies underneath the dumbbell rack that in of themselves are an issue, but it is the subconscious signal you are telling to your clients that suggests this is a place that is not receiving consistent love, care, and attention. And we can do better. And here's how you do it. Number one, have clearly written standard operating procedures and checklists for cleaning. So if we want things to be clean, you wanna make it easy for people to do the right thing. And just like any other role or task in the business, that starts with having a very clear vision of what success looks like and how things are supposed to be done. This isn't a customer facing role, so there's absolutely no reason that you can't use either a maybe laminated piece of paper or a binder or even an iPad if you wanna get fancy that makes it exactly clear step by step there's a checklist for exactly how we go about keeping the place clean and in the best possible shape. Number two, and this actually relates to number one, which is in addition to having a checklist, you will likely benefit from having clearly documented visual standards for exactly what the space should look like when everything is back in its place. So the two places in most gyms where things can get a little squirrely is number one, the front desk. So the front desk can become an absolute mess for a lot of places. So it's very important to be very clear. And I would note, I I'm talking specifically about the front desk here, but if you have, let's say maybe a sales consult room, or maybe even you as the owner have an office that sometimes clients come into, those are also places that we want to be very, very clean. And part of how we do that in some cases is creating what's sometimes called a visual jigger. And that sounds fancy, but it's like a, if you're pouring a martini, like I love martinis and I'm like, oh, like two ounces of dry gin. Oh, three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth. Oh, the boo 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 doo doo a little bit of bitters, martini. But in this case, you're doing it for your gym, which admittedly is not quite as fun because you don't get drunk at all that I know of. So the place where things are most likely to go wildly astray and where your clients will most feel the impact is the actual training floor and the training spaces. So it's very important that your coaches, your entire team knows exactly what put away looks like. Most of us in the modern training gym have all sorts of fun tools. You got the foam rollers, you got the bands, you have the Airx pads. Where do they all go? when things are done. And how can you certainly make sure throughout the day, you certainly wanna do spot cleaning, but at the very least, at the end of a shift or the beginning of a shift, things should look immaculate. So clients have a very consistent visual experience where they come in. Number three, outsource cleaning, including periodic deep cleaning. Now, listen, depending on where you're at in the life cycle of your gym, you might not be ready to do that yet. In the beginning, it only makes sense for the owner to do some of these things, but at a certain point, cleaning a gym is not gonna be a very good use of your time because just from a dollar's perspective, you likely can do higher impact more leverageable activities that will lead to better results for your gym. Things like marketing, sales, watching Mark's YouTube videos, and hitting subscribe so you don't even miss any. Furthermore, outside of the regular cleaning, whether that's happening multiple times per day or probably no less than every other day, but you also need to do periodic deep cleans. So really getting in there. If you got those big fans, they're gonna need to be cleaned. You do need to scrub underneath the dumbbells sometimes, bathrooms, and certainly if you have showers, those are places that really, really, really benefit from some meaningful love and some real elbow grease. Number four, do periodic walkthroughs through the space to look for things to improve. So at MFF, this is the thing we do. It's a little bit easier because I'm not in the space all that often, right? So that's when I walk in, things jump out at me like a sore thumb if there's an obvious thing that needs to be changed in a way that even somebody that's very sensitive to this that works in a space full time will tend to have difficulty seeing over time. What you might wanna do is maybe once every at least three months, do your very best to put it on your calendar and do a walkthrough of the space slowly and meticulously, trying to look at everything with fresh eyes and just slowly move the entire space, looking at everything 
looking for small things that need to be fixed. I know I keep saying this over and over, but it's little things like fraying resistance bands. It's not the thing that's messed up. It's the signal that the thing that's messed up sends to your clients about the love, care, and attention going into the space and by proxy, the business. And in practice, we always find small things like, oh, there is a, this door needs to be repainted or this part of the wall where people roll uh, their upper back, the crossbow is getting dirty, that needs to be addressed. So you wanna create some system and I think quarterly for most of you most of the time is not a bad way to do it. And finally, the fifth tip here is you wanna have a budget for this. You wanna have a budget for big, and small improvements. So many of you know at Mark Fisher Fitness and Business Unicorns, we use and recommend Profit First, the cash management system. And we actually have a specific account. We take a, a small percentage of our revenue every single pay period, and we just put it towards an account that we will use for constant, never-ending improvements of the space. Just change things around because if things never change, again, it's not the thing, it's the signal that things says. I have one final counterintuitive suggestion as relates to this fifth tip is yes, there's a time and a place for maybe once a year doing a real big change and doing really big things in the space that are substantial. But oddly, I think it's important on a monthly basis to constantly be doing small things, paint a wall here, change out some of the art there, the art there, art? You don't have art in your gym? We do. You could even change things as far as how the front desk is set up when they come in. And ideally, we're not making changes just to make changes. I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting you should spend time and energy and money to do things that don't have an impact. But I do think making small, obvious changes to the business over time, he's saying it again, it's not the small changes over time in and of themselves, it is the signal that you're sending to the clients, which now is a positive one, which says this is a space that is cared for, this is a business that's receiving love and attention, and we're always working to improve. My suggestion is rather than doing a complete overall every two years, even though sometimes you'll have to do more substantial changes, I actually think you're best off holding yourself back, using some discipline here to not change everything all at once, which is both better for cash flow and I think will have a better emotional impact on your clients. All right, pals, I hope you enjoyed today's video. My goodness, I wanna acknowledge this is probably the least sexy video ever, but you know what is sexy? Your clients feeling loved and cared for by the way you take care of your beautiful, shining, clean, constantly refurbished space. If you enjoyed today's video and you wanna be sure you don't miss any new ones, go ahead, smash that subscribe button because I will be seeing you soon with yet another video where I will offer more actionable tips, psychological frameworks, and philosophy.